bunch of books. Well, I really love my job. The hardest thing sometimes people say, like my editor will say, okay, you have to turn and the 5th of December. And I bet sometimes, has this ever happened? You've got a homework assignment and you think, well, I could do it this morning. I'm going to have to work really hard to get it done on time. That ever happened to you? That happens to me with books sometimes. But usually I love it because I get to go in my imagination and have adventures in my head and get out and meet new friends like you. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, which one is my favorite book? That is so hard to answer. The honest answer is whatever book I'm working on right at that time, that's my favorite book. Because that's the one that I'm thinking about and I'm traveling about and I'm imagining. So I always think, oh, this is the best book I've ever written. And then when I'm sad, when it's over, when I've finished it, and then I move on to another book, and then I enjoy writing that one. Oh, what an interesting question. If I couldn't be an author, what would I be? Uh, well, I would probably work in, the, in a museum somewhere. Um, I love doing that, too, because I love history so much. I used to do both at the same time, but that got too hard. Yeah, but that's fun, too. And you would fit in very well working at a historic study in a museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any others? Hey, and everybody's had their tea, right? Or their refreshments? Now, let me just, I'll show you, show you, I have a little bit of show up towel up here that you can look at later, and I'm going to explain it all while everybody's sitting, seating, seated, sorry, um, and then you can take a look later on, and do we have a bag going around, does everybody, does everybody, all the girls have their name in the bag for a prize drawing? Okay, thank you. Okay, and struggling for money back then, and we, <clears throat> I showed that picture of the lady who had gone grocery shopping and she had some big sacks. Do you remember those? Because people used to buy food in big, big quantities. Often now we get little quantities. So in kids' time, your mom might have gone to the store and bought this much flour, a big sack of flour. And before depression, which is kids' time when money was really tight, these sacks would just be white. And then some ladies figured out, this is not paper, this is a nice, sturdy cotton cloth. And they looked at these sacks and said, you know, when this sack is empty, I can make a new skirt for my daughter out of this cloth. And then the people that made the flower sacks said, well, if people are going to make clothes out of our sacks, let's make them pretty. Let's put colored designs on there, and then hopefully everybody will buy our brand of flower. So all these sacks started having these designs on them. And the ladies would buy the sack, and when it was empty, they'd carefully take off this label, and then they'd have a piece of cloth. So I bet when school started this year, some of you went shopping and you maybe got a new outfit to start school with. I bet you went to a clothes store, didn't you? Well, if you lived back in Kids Day, you might have gone to the grocery store mm -hmm. to get your new outfit because you'd have to pick out one of those sacks. So here's some samples. All of these pieces of fabric came from a sack that had flour in it or potatoes or something. So if you were picking out your new outfit for the first day of school, how many of you would go with red and blue stripes? Nice and bright and cheerful. How about purple with little flowers? Oh, everybody likes that one. Or here's something that's a little more quiet, white with some colored leaves on it. So you can see the different companies did different things, and they appeal to different people. And then I also have a couple of pieces from a quilt that someone was making, and these are also, all the fabrics came from those sacks. So in addition to quilts, you might have picked out something like this for your new outfit. Now for Josefina, 
I have a little piece of the kind of weaving that girls and women did at that time that when they lived in the desert. And these are not old, but this is the kind of doll that Josefina might have been playing with. Do you know what these are made with? I know some of you are familiar with that. Corn husks, right. Very simple to make, but it might have been one of the few toys that a, children, a child had. Now for Kirsten, remember we talked about you might not have very much room if you were traveling and immigrating. Well, in Kirsten's story, there's a little box described like this. This one probably came from Sweden or Norway. And if the kids didn't have very much room for toys, they had to think hard about what they could play with. And in the Kirsten story, one of the things she gets to play with is, you know what that is? It's not a bouncy ball. It's a marble, yes. This is a very old marble. It's made out of clay, just like the houses that we saw in the Josefina books. Today, most marbles are made out of glass. So I have some old marbles. Uh, if you want to take a look at them, just look at them inside this little box, okay? We'll leave them on the table. But that was a toy that you could just put in your pocket and it wouldn't take up much room. And you can see the ration book here. I've got some things from Molly's day. And this is the one that was in the slide. And this is a little fragile, so I will also ask that you not pick it up. I usually end up with little stamps falling out. But see all those little tiny stamps? So let me see this way. Those are the things that if you went to the grocery store, you, the grocer would say, well, that butter is going to cost five dollars and four stamps. And then you or your mom would very carefully pull out just the right number of stamps. And when your book was empty, it was empty until you got a new one. And let's see, we have a basket from Kentucky, so you can see what some of those beautiful baskets look like. And this is the kind of lamp that some of the men in Kentucky used. They put it on their helmets when they were doing mining work, going into the mines so that they could see. And that's on the cover of the kid book. So, okay. There's a couple things up here that everyone is welcome to pick up. We have a, just a fun little activity sheet you can take home. And everyone's welcome to take home. Got a stack of bookmarks up here. You're all welcome to take them home. Let's do the 